Hi, I've messed up this morning. I got here far too early. High tide is at 11.30. Ideally, I'd be here two hours before, so 9.30. I got here about eight o'clock. So it's been a long wait already. Worse than that, I've had no breakfast. Everywhere's closed, all the shops are closed, all the cafes. Um, so I've had three biscuits and a bit of water so far. I'm not likely to get any more until quite late in the day. I first came to this spot when I was in my late teens, early twenties. We came for a week and I can remember it was the month of September. And a friend of myself, we had hides up on the estuary at every high tide with the waders being pushed towards us. And it was a fantastic experience. It's very different today. When I got here yesterday, it was very drizzly. Seven o'clock in the morning, I'm walking about here. There were so many people, dog walkers, fishermen, all along the beach there was fishermen, dog walkers over on the estuary. It's a very crowded world and unfortunately doesn't leave much room for the birds and didn't see many waders at all. I could see one high tide roost of curlews but you couldn't get at it or you, you could but you'd be cut off by the tide so it'd be a dangerous place to be and eventually right at the end of the the session I came here and I was standing up on the top of this wall here with other, other people and there was a bunch of waders here roosting on these rocks. It was only dunlin and turnstones and ring plovers, but it's the only option that I saw. So I've come back this morning and I'm just going to sit here with my back to this wall. I'm not going to put a hide up because there's too many people about, but I'm just optimistic if I can keep my back against the wall that you don't stand out so much and the birds are going to land on the rocks in front of me. Maybe at high tide if we ever get there. Things continue to go wrong in this session. You can see the tide is a long way out at this point, but by the time the tide got closer, the wind had built up until there was a very strong gale blowing. The birds did come in, a big flock of ring plovers and dunlin and turnstone, and they landed right in front of me, but the vibration that the wind was causing on my telephoto lens really was spoiling the video shots. It doesn't affect stills photography so badly, but for video this is terrible. You can see the shake in the picture. So let's just look at a few things you can do to try to reduce it. First of all, you switch off the sound. That immediately makes the scene seem calmer. Then you add a soundtrack that you've previously recorded on a calmer day. Since I've been shooting video I've made quite a collection of background sounds that I can use in my films. We'll just pause the picture there while I describe other things that I did. First of all, all the footage was taken at 60 frames per second, so I can then slow it down to just over half speed, and that helps to reduce the vibration too. And then finally, in post-production, I put the vibration reduction on. All video editing software should have this. I use PowerDirector, and it's a very simple thing to switch it on, and that makes a big difference. So all of the footage you're looking at is taken with the vibration reduction on in post-production and the footage is at least half speed and one section of it will be even slower. So this is with the vibration reduction on and you can see it's very effective. The eye does keep going slightly soft. I suspect that's because the shutter speed being quite slow wasn't fast enough to freeze the bird during the vibration. But the other problem you have is the birds themselves don't pose well when the wind is so strong. This bird is looking sort of hunkered down instead of standing upright and that will spoil your stills pictures as well as the video. You really want them on top of a rock like this and most of them were spending their time lower down, getting out of the wind. I do like the effect of the waves breaking behind the bird though. We can see some Dunlin in the picture here, there's five Dunlin. Now this bit was taken at 120 frames per second and that certainly does help to reduce the vibration. 
nowhere near so noticeable. The other thing that wasn't happening, there wasn't a lot of interaction. Now when I was watching them the previous day, there was a lot of fighting and squabbling going on. But due to these conditions, the birds were just not bothering and just hiding out of the wind. There's a bit of interaction here. This one's obviously giving the bird on its right a, a mouthful. But the juvenile was not bothered by it at all and stood his ground. The Dunlin, very noticeable, tuck their heads in and try and sleep or what passes for sleep for a wader. It's very common with wading species to have a good rest at high tide and often it goes on for hours. If they can't feed then they rest to preserve their energy. I guess for a ring plover to tuck the bill behind their head like that would be quite difficult. It's a shorter bill and a thicker looking neck. And this is 120 frames per second slow motion. So it's about five times slow. And turnstones did come in as well. I've recently been filming turnstones so I wasn't particularly interested in these. So we'll just look at a few stills pictures that I took. What I'd do is just press the button for about one second, which is going to give me the best part of 30 pictures, and out of those I would expect one or two to be sharp despite the wind, and in fact most of them were sharp. And now we'll look at something else that I tried. This picture is taken with the Sony A1, the 200-600mm lens at the 600mm end. The next shot is taken with the 2 times extender, so a 1200mm lens. Then I took off the 2 times extender and this picture is taken with the 2 times digital zoom. And the quality is exactly the same, you can't tell them apart. Whether you take the picture with the extender or with the 2 times digital zoom, it's the same and the file is not cropped. The file is still the full size 8640 pixels on the longest edge because it's interpolated back to its full size. This is taken at the 600mm end with no extender on, but this is a four times digital zoom, so a 2400mm lens. There is a downside to it though, you have to shoot at 160 ISO to retain the quality, but it is still a full size file, 8640 pixels on the longest edge. The quality, amazing. That wasn't the best session I've ever had. It got far too windy. You can see there's vibration in all the footage I took from the wind just hitting the side of the lens. And the birds don't pose very well when it's windy either. But if they do go onto the top of the rocks, if they do, they, they don't pose. They don't sit upright. Their heads are down low. But they spend most of the time sheltering behind the rocks. So that sport it a bit really. Now I can't resist but to show you some more footage I've taken using digital zoom. So this is the 200-600mm lens at the 600mm end with a 2 times extender, so a 1200mm lens. But the next clip is the same combination but with the digital zoom 2 times. So now we have a 2400mm lens, plus there's an extra factor, it's taken at 4K video, so that has a magnification factor too. I've been googling it and can't actually find what it is with the Sony A1, but it's quite likely 1.5 times. So that means this is a 3600mm lens. Pretty incredible quality. But with such a magnification, you certainly don't want the wind blowing. Thanks for watching.